Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Taylor, also known as Taylor with an E, and we have finally made it to part three of the Q&A series. So in part one, I answered questions you had about teaching in Korea. Part two was all about questions you had about living in Korea. And for today, the third and final part, I am answering your questions about me. <music> I was 26 when I decided to move to Korea, so it wasn't straight out of college. I actually worked for a little over three years after I graduated before I made the decision to move to Korea, but I'd always wanted to live abroad and Korea was pretty much the top country that I wanted to live abroad in. But yeah, I didn't make the actual decision to move until I was 26. And then I moved to Korea when I was 27. If you are interested to know why I decided to make the jump and move to Korea, you could actually watch my very first video about Korea <laughs> that I ever posted on YouTube. And I explained kind of my whole thought process and how I came to the final decision to take that leap. So I will put it in the cards above. I actually have quite a bit of Korean foods I really like. So some of my favorites are japchae, which is a clear or they say glass noodle dish. I love napjak mandu, also known as flat dumplings. So those are a daegu specialty. And what they are is instead of having a dumpling with filling in it, it's basically what I said. It's a flat dumpling basically of just the dough part, but you dip it in soy sauce and it's so, so good. I absolutely love me some napjak mandu. And then I also really like jeon, which is Korea's version of a pancake and it's more savory and they put like a lot of different fillings inside of it. So it could be green onion, it could be some seafood, it could be kimchi. And then again, you dip it in some soy sauce and it's delicious. And then my final one would have to be Korean fried chicken, which I guess fried chicken isn't really Korean, but the Koreanized version of fried chicken is beyond. It almost competes with black fried chicken. They know how to make some fried chicken here. And then to answer the second question, what's my favorite day in Korea, which I'm guessing you mean maybe holiday. So that's how I'm going to answer it. So my favorite holiday in Korea is Buddha's birthday, which is actually coming up next week. And I love this holiday because basically all of Korea is decked out in these colorful lanterns. You see them on the street, you see them outside shops, you see them all over temples. It is so beautiful. And if any of you guys watch my most Instagramable places in Busan vlog, I actually feature one of the most famous temples for this lantern decking for Buddha's birthday, which I believe is called Samgwangsa. They are just known for decking out this temple with thousands upon thousands of lanterns, and it's so amazing. And so this only happens during Buddha's birthday. But also, another reason I love this holiday is because this is also when Daegu's Dalgubol festival takes place, which is their lantern festival. So this is when people release like tons of lanterns into the sky. And I went for the first time, I want to say the year before COVID hit, and I got a place like right up in the front. And it was probably the most amazing, beautiful scenes I have ever seen in my life. And it will just stick with me forever. So yeah, that's why I absolutely love Buddha's birthday here in Korea. Yeah, I have a few hobbies that I enjoy here in Korea. So one is tennis, which I played a lot when I was younger, but stopped before college, right before college. And so this has been the first time I actually picked up a racket again in a really long time. And it has been so much fun. It is actually a way I've met a lot of Korean friends here because they're all interested to speak to me in English. I'm the only foreigner playing and they just have all been so nice. It's like I found my little community here playing tennis again. And then another hobby 
I have one I picked up during COVID was actually knitting and that was actually because the sixth graders at my school I guess they had a knitting class or part of their home economics class or something and so they had some extra materials and so some teachers were like oh hey Taylor do you want to learn how to knit like we have supplies for you and I was like why not? And I absolutely love it. Especially it helps with my anxiety. It's so calming. I love knitting and just listening to a podcast. It's become like one of my favorite activities actually. And then of course my final activity traveling which I haven't really done <laughs> since COVID. But yeah traveling would be my other I guess hobby that I do here. And then I did also dance for a while here. I was part of an international dance team in Daegu actually. It was the first hobby I picked up here. But I had danced some in the US. I was like a ballroom and salsa dancer back in the US. And then here I joined a hip hop studio and became part of their foreigner dance team. So we performed like all around Daegu and it was so much fun. But I haven't done that since moving to Incheon and a lot of the team moved away so it's been kind of sad so yeah after I moved from Daegu I didn't really do that anymore so I would say I'm a beginner Korean language learner a lot of the Korean I've picked up so far has just been in my daily life and living here so long. I know a lot of Korean that gets me by for day-to-day -day life, like telling a taxi driver where to go or ordering in Korean. I actually hadn't had any formal lessons in Korean until recently. I just started private tutoring or working with a private tutor, I would say, to help me with my Korean. But I do know how to read Hangul. I do know a lot of vocabulary words, but now with the tutor, I'm learning how to make complete sentences. So it's kind of like puzzle pieces coming together of what I already know and how to make formal structures out of them. But further than that, still a work in progress. My Korean has definitely, I feel like, improved a lot. Like I said, I'm just starting formal lessons in Korean, but since I first came here until now, I definitely, like I said, can get through day to day with the little <laughs> Korean that I know. And I'm able to read Korean really well. I feel like just hearing it so often, now speaking it more, my pronunciation is a lot better. And also over the years, I've gotten really good at picking up social cues when listening to Korean. So even though maybe I don't know everything that is being said, I can read the situation, read the body language and understand what someone is saying, I guess. <laughs> And then I've also learned a lot of classroom Korean for sure. So <laughs> I think working here five years and teaching here five years, I, that is probably the thing I have picked up most, especially from my co-teachers. So I shoot with a Sony ZV-1 camera and I actually just bought it before if you watched any of my older videos. I shot those with a Sony A5100 which if any of you guys are into vlogging or want to get into vlogging that's a great starter camera and it doesn't cost too much money or at least as much money as some of these fancier models out here. And then as far as other tools I use for my travel vlogs, I have stabilizers that I use. So I have a big one for my camera, which is the Jiyun Crane M. And I also have a smaller DJI Osmo Mobile 3 that I use for my phone. And then finally, I have a monopod. And this is kind of the setup I use for vlogging, whether it be just talking at videos like this or even for travel vlogging. I absolutely love this thing. It was such a great investment, even though it wasn't even really that much money. And I bought it because I wanted something more compact and that could travel better than a tripod. So what this is, is basically a detachable monopod. So you have the monopod part here that is extendable. So I already had to extend a little bit here to shoot this video. So this part comes down and that's how compact it gets. 
but this also can extend up to like two or three other tiers so it can get pretty high so i use that a lot when taking my own travel photos and have my, my camera basically set up like this but what's also cool is once you detach this part this little tripod on the bottom can be attached to the camera itself so you can have a little vlogging setup here as well it's great for travel it's great for you know personal vlogging or sit down vlogs like this and it's probably my favorite vlogging accessory so yeah those are the tools i use i guess physical tools i use and the final tool i guess that i use is final cut pro which i use to edit all my videos It definitely is different after moving here. You know, I used to watch so many YouTubers in Korea before I moved to Korea, but now, not so much. The only people I follow these days are friends or acquaintances that I know here in Korea and that I know also have a YouTube channel. So some of those channels are Coco SMB, which her name is Courtney, and she was literally my day one friend here in Korea before we even got to orientation we were staying at the same hotel and so we met there and literally have been friends ever since and she's still currently in Korea so her channel is all about Korean skincare and beauty for darker skin tones which I think is something really needed right now because you don't see too many black women in Korea doing that and then so I also follow the suitcase designer also known as April Tandy she is an interior design vlogger here in Korea I follow a channel called Marion's Life. She's a super cool girl I met in Daegu and she is a fantastic storyteller and she also has curly hair routines that she does and she's actually one of the people who inspired me to go natural myself. So I follow her channel. I also follow Korean Ali. Hey it's Anne, Just Nolu, and Bria in Korea. So those are the main seven channels I currently follow who are also YouTubers in Korea. Oh gosh, this question is from someone who knew me from my <laughs> K-pop cover days. Oh my gosh, that was a long time ago. That was maybe right after college, during college. Oh my gosh, that was so long ago. So yeah, guys, if you didn't know, years ago, I would do K-pop dance covers, but any evidence of that has since been scrubbed from my YouTube channel. So no, there aren't any K-pop dance covers coming soon. <laughs> So before I went natural, I would actually go to a salon here in Korea and get the Korean Magic Straight Perm, which I do have a video on that if you want to check it out. But now that I am natural, I do my own hair. And I order all my products from Coupang or Amazon. Coupang is basically Korea's Amazon. And luckily, the products I use are well known enough. So, you know, it's actually not too expensive to ship them over here. And I can find them pretty easily online. So yeah, I just have been taking care of my hair myself. There aren't any other countries I really am wanting to live in, but I also wouldn't say Korea is home for good, just because you never know. And I don't see myself spending the rest of my life in Korea. I know I'll probably move back to the US eventually, or maybe even another country, who knows, but I'm not wanting to live in any other countries at this current moment. This is actually probably the question I get most from family, from friends, from really whoever finds out I live in Korea and have been living here as long as I have. So I'll answer this question as I would, you know, any other time I've been asked it. And that is, I don't know. I don't know when I'm leaving Korea. I don't know if we will stay here long term. We're kind of playing it year by year because that's how long our contracts are. So if at the end of a contract, we feel like hmm, maybe it's time to leave, 
then we'll probably leave. It's pretty much an indefinite period right now. You know, one thing that has changed about me since living in Korea is that I am not a long-term planner anymore. I am very much appreciating living from day to day and living in the moment. You know, it's more of a feeling at this point. Like we're really comfortable in Korea right now and we really enjoy our lives here. But hey, that could change. That could change in a month. That could change in a year. That could change in five years. Who knows? You know, and when it's time to leave Korea, we'll know. But I can't give an exact date or year that will be. So, yeah. Yes, we are living in separate housing for the moment. If you guys watched my life update video, you will know that was not the plan. We were actually supposed to move in together this year, and actually we were planning to move in together the previous year too, but each year just really didn't work out for us. So we do still plan on living together. Crossing our fingers, next year will be the year, but yeah, currently we are living separately. So I won't go too in detail with this answer because I do want to do a future story time video about how we met and hopefully get him on camera too to help me tell that story. But long story short, we did meet while we were living in Daegu. Like I said, I was part of a dance team while I lived there. So we were performing at an event where he was a photographer at, and he also knew someone on my dance team. So we kind of met through a mutual friend. But there's definitely more to that story, which like I said, I do want to make a future story time video about it. You guys just have to help me get him on camera with me <laughs> because I think it will be interesting to hear our how we met story from both sides. So then as far as wedding plans, those are kind of up in the air right now as well. We really wanted to fly back to the US and get married and have, you know, our ceremony and everything there. But with the current COVID situation, who knows how travel is going to be. So that's kind of dampening our plans right now. So we may even think about the option of getting married here on paper at least, and then just having the ceremony back in the US. I don't know. So yeah, it's it's really up in the air at this point. All right, guys, so those were all the questions you had about me. Again, if you haven't checked out the first or second part of my Q&A videos, you can find those links in the description box below. I hope you guys have an amazing, wonderful day, and I will see you next time.